to help explain the raw material consumption in the landed cost template, first step would be a traditional kind of purchase order to a raw materials part supplier. When you take item or receipt for that, you'll drop it into an inventory location and the item would become consignment at that point. For our example here, we'll say that our purchase order for the raw material started off at $1. Then the second step would be to create a purchase order to the finished good part supplier and they will consume the raw material that we first purchased from the first supplier They'll take those as inputs. From their perspective, the materials are consignment materials. And when we do an item receipt into the same location to produce the finished good, our landed cost template will uh, kick in and it will consume the raw material that was first purchased to capitalize or burden the finished good cost. So in our example here, suppose that our finished good item started off at $8.00. And let's assume then that our landed cost template defined formula to be two quantity of raw materials are consumed for every finished good that's manufactured. Our final finished good will be now $10 when it completes. This diagram is an overview of the ways that the customization works in the environment. You have your traditional NetSuite purchase orders and purchase order lines, which reference a standard NetSuite item. Our innovation is to create an item version against the item, allowing us to create multiple item versions. The item version can be used as a way to maintain different price history, effective datings, and so forth. And it is the connection point into our landed cost template world. Our landed cost can be named and it can contain multiple lines which are different cost allocation methods. The landed cost template can also apply in certain location references. And certainly there could be a reference to a manufacturer or supplier. The idea around this is that during an item receipt operation, which may have occur through a purchase order or through a transfer order for our in-transit flows, Whenever we have a item receipt operation, we look up the item version that is in play. If the location that we're receiving to is applicable, then we apply our landed cost. We derive our formulas, which includes our raw material consumption item. Here we're looking at a standard inventory item, which has a number of predefined uh, item versions. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of these here and we can define our item, a description, a note, a vendor name, a date that it starts, an end date, and we can indicate whether this is a the current version that would be being used. We can indicate the currency for which this applies and the rate. I'm going to make the rate 80 here and I'm going to connect it to an existing uh, landed cost template here. Let me go ahead and save that. We go back and look at our inventory item. A few things that I can show that are important here. Uh, one is, is that we can now see that this item version that I just edited is the most current one with this here. And you can also see there's another pointer that indicates that this is the current item version that's in play. We can see the rate and the landed cost template that applies. One way this is used is when we're creating our purchase orders, we can uh, select our item that we were working with, 34603, and as we pull this up, watch the item version, it will select the default one, which was the current version there, and notice it will select $80, which was the current rate. Now, we don't have to work with that one. If we wanted to work with a different one, let's say F, right, it'll change the price and so forth. Ultimately, though, We'll just go with the current one for the purposes of this demonstration. We go ahead and save that. We bring over the vendor name and various other kinds of descriptive kind of information that would go on to the purchase order for being able to communicate to the, to the supplier. Now we're going to go ahead and go into a receiving operation so that we can actually illustrate how the landed cost template will, will apply. So let me go ahead and hit receive. Okay. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to select one and we're going to go ahead and hit save. What we're seeing here is a landed cost template and its definition with four different cost allocation methods here. The key to understanding this is, is that the landed cost template works in a particular currency in certain target locations. I'll take the 
simplest cost allocation methods first uh, to help explain how they're done. Over here are cost categories, which are effectively NetSuite landed cost categories, which give us pointers to the general ledger. The first item here from the bottom, when we have an item receipt operation, we take 10 per quantity. So for example, in our item receipt operation, if we had three that we were receiving, we'd take three times 10 and we'd get 300. Flat amount, which we're specifying against freight, is relatively straightforward. Just whatever we have, put 500 US dollars for freight. Here's percentage of value that we're saying is for insurance. And the idea behind this one is let's assume that the item receipt value is worth $100. Well, then we'll take 3% of that or $3 for insurance. And finally, the most complicated one, but the most, most interesting one in my mind, is the raw consumption one. This is how we solve the consignment uh, parts challenge. The idea here is that we take a quantity of two for every quantity that is actually being received. So for example, if we're saying that we have three items that we're receiving, we would take three times two or six of the 34, 620 items as raw material and consume them. And the way we do that is we decrement six items of 34, 620 determine what the value of that is, and then burden it. Now we will explain how the landed cost template got its values. Let's click through to the landed cost template here. Move that aside so we can see. Let me bring over the formulas that we used. Let us see that uh, the value of the item was $80 here, and we only received one. Let's go through our calculations. For clearing and forwarding, we said that they, we'd have 10 per, qu per quantity. There was only a quantity of one, thus we have 10. For freight, we said $500, the flat amount. There we go. For insurance, we said $2.40. If we see, 80 times 3% would be $2.40. This one here for the item consumption reference is the one that, that is $712.50. So to, in order to explain that, we need to go into the item consumption to understand what happened. Here we have an item adjustment that was automatically created. Let's go look at the item adjustment. What we ended up doing here is we consumed two of the 34,620, which has a value of 71250 from this location. Now when we go back, we can see that we did indeed get the 71250 from there. When we look at the GL impact, we can see the effect of all the burdening. Here, the very first lines represent the purchase order cost. The rest of the items are the capitalization process, including our raw material consumption process.